Okay, let's do some live jetting here. We're going to start in manual mode, which if you're running without the wireless remote. So first thing I do is make sure this red handle valve is down. That's the safety position. Next thing, I, if I have remote control, I make sure this is off. Now I'm free to use the key start. Put the key in. I turn it to the run position for a moment. Let the fuel injector load. Let the wireless control valve, if you have wireless, reset. And then I get jetting. So I'm going to stop talking and go after it. Now, for those of you that purchase wireless remote control, I know we covered that moments ago, but just want to remind you of a few things. Number one, you don't need the key, so we just take the key out when you're going to run wirelessly. Turn your wireless remote switch to on, and don't forget that you need to lift this valve up into the pressure position. This, again, we call the safety, so we leave it down. But as soon as I turn my wireless on, um, the secondary valve, which is just like this one, but it's controlled via an actuator and the wireless remote is open so it's already in the safety position so before i go indoors and most of the reason for wireless remote is because you want to work somewhere away from the jitter you've got to lift this valve all the way up so that water will flow to the hose and the reel and the nozzle okay let's take a moment to talk about hose management and safety um, jetting hose is made to be lightweight it does not have a steel braid in it it has either polyester or like this jet hose, Kevlar. Um, so being that it's lightweight and with these fiber reinforcements, they have one thing is they're very easy to kink. Okay, so we'd like to talk about hose management. Um, here I'm ready to wind up my hose after jetting. So I've rolled it out into a nice big loop. Uh, what I don't want to have happen is I'm looking at the hose reel on my controls and I'm winding up and I don't realize that I've created a loop so that when I tighten the hose up, it suddenly kinks. If I put a kink in this, it's going to create a weak point. Okay, so we have other videos too, videos too that talk about like a tiger tail hose guide, using hose guides to protect the jack end of the hose. I'm not going to get into that now. I recommend you take a look at that link. But what I want to just show you here is how I like to wind up the hose so that I don't kink it. I look out for things like I don't want to get caught on a sharp edge somewhere. I don't want to get wrapped around a rock or a tree or a post or something. I've got the hose free to wind up in one nice big long loop. So now I can just come up here. I've got a motorized reel and I put wind, put it, this one's adjustable. I'm going to put it in kind of a medium slow position and just start winding it up. I'm looking at both getting it on to the reel without, you know, rolling over the side. And I'm looking at my hose around me to make sure it doesn't kink. I can speed it up with my adjustable speed control if I want. Getting near the end. And one thing I didn't cover earlier that I should have, really highly recommend that a few feet in, you put a tape mark here with some electrical tape. Um, you can go crazy with that too. Some guys will roll the whole hose out and they'll put like a piece of red tape at 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, and they'll put a piece of blue tape at 25 feet, 75 feet, and so on. They might get another color and put them at 100 feet. You can do whatever you want. If you're gonna do that kind of stuff, recommend you do it before you get it covered with grease, okay? Uh, sometimes guys also for safety, or maybe spray paint the whole first 10 feet of it orange or something. The point is so that you don't pull, the last thing you wanna do, the most important safety thing with jetting is you don't accidentally pull the nozzle out under pressure so that orange color or the red safety tape gives you a warning that you're getting close to the end. So I can tell you from experience that if you pull out a nozzle out of a line under pressure, 
it doesn't just spray. What it wants to do is fly around everywhere, and I have literally been hit right here. If I would have been hit up here, I probably would have a glass eye, okay? Um, these things can hurt you when they get out of the line. The beauty of jetting nozzles is that they have the bias of wanting to pull themselves into the line. So as long as you don't accidentally pull it out under pressure, you know, then you're gonna be safe. Um, there are jetting nozzles on the market that have all the jets going forward. You have to be an experienced operator to really understand how to use those because they, they are unsafe. We generally don't sell them. We certainly don't provide them as standard equipment because a nozzle that has no rear jets will want to blast itself right back out of the pipe, okay? So, just lastly again, talking about safety. Put a good mark on your hose somewhere so you know that you're getting close to the end of it so this thing never comes out and bites you. Okay, included with any Brute Jetter and with our Eagle Trailer Jetters is what we call our accessory adapter. So what this is, is this adapts to the end of your jetting hose so you can connect on accessories such as a mini hose which is super super common for those of you that do indoor jetting now this does not require teflon tape simply use a double wrench and give it a good snug now you've got a watertight connection there just like if you use that nozzle extension that i mentioned earlier and now we have a simple quick coupler we can connect into a mini hose we could have a ball valve control here we could put in a foot valve control. Our foot valves are going to have the same quick couplers. We can go into, this is a typical pressure washer connection, so we can connect onto a pressure washer trigger gun, or like with our setups, you could use this as a control for your mini hose. The point is, they're all with nice quick couplers. These you can find anywhere locally to replace them if you're in a pinch. I uh, just want to make sure when you connect them that you can't see the ball bearings. If you see the ball bearings, it's going to blow off. So you push it till it clicks. So pretty simple and when you want to go back to regular jetting, and you want to put a nozzle on here, just again, just take your wrenches and take it right off, put it back in the toolbox. Or you could just leave it connected, leave this little adapter connected to your favorite tool. Well, that pretty much sums up our basic brute training session. Now, um, there's a lot more information you can find online. Really encourage you, if you haven't yet, look at our YouTube site where you can get into more of the technical aspects of nozzles, how the machine actually builds pressure. Highly encourage you to watch those, uh, especially the Resistance Makes Pressure series of two jetters. It'll just help your jetter expertise grow and grow. And to use any of those videos to train new people, train your staff, just so you can get the most out of your brute jetter. Also, for other nozzles and accessories, if you're thinking about, take a look at our site shop.jettersnorthwest.com and you have quite a bit there to select from. And of course, anytime you can give us a call here, we can help you out. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your purchase. Get out there. Get jetting.